One man, one mission. To rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine. A leading authority in generalized anxiety, Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. Inspiring people, warriors, welcome to episode 279. This is the Anxiety Guy podcast. I'm your grateful host, Dennis Simsek. Thanks for joining me. Before I get into this podcast episode, I want to let you know that the next masterclass related to health anxiety healing begins very, very soon. If you want to sign up, head over to theanxietyguy.com. Click on the Members option and join our monthly masterclasses each and every month towards the end of each month. TheAnxietyGuy.com And today, Warriors, in this podcast episode, I want to discuss a topic that we don't really discuss very often. I know that there's a lot of information, a lot of content out there related to social anxiety cures social anxiety help for anxiety sufferers, but I wanted to add my own piece to the puzzle. And when I think about my own experiences with social anxiety, I mean, you can see how all of it gets interconnected, right? So you've got the panic disorder part where you're afraid of panicking in front of people. You're afraid of the buildup towards a panic attack. You've got the health anxiety part where you're always focused on a particular symptom, a sensation in your body, and recognizing whether the opposing person or the people around you in fact see how nervous you are and in fact you want to make sure that you're not making a fool out of yourself. Then you've got the general anxiety part where you're just catastrophizing all the time and your mind reading other people and in fact your fortune telling believing that you can tell the future when in fact we have no idea and when we talk about all these different disorders we can see how it can truly affect our social life and warriors your social life is very important very important in fact When we think about the four fundamentals to healing, we're talking about HALT. We're talking about hunger and blood sugar levels. We're talking about anger and whether you're still holding on to something from your past. And we're talking about loneliness. We're talking about a feeling of being disconnected, disinterested. And we're talking about T, tiredness. But today it's more so about the loneliness part because social anxiety can in fact bring you to a place where you do feel very lonely and you feel very misunderstood because a big part of you wants to connect with others but there's a big part of you that is afraid to make a mistake or do the wrong thing or show your weaknesses or be too emotional or whatever it is. And so my personal experience was that I went in and out of this and I used, temporarily in fact, sometimes I used an alcoholic beverage to loosen me up, right? Loosen me up around people so that I could speak, so that I could be a part of the conversation. I had a lot to add. I had a lot of value to give to people. I cared about people, but at the same time, My self-worth was depleting. I mean, it was demoralizing. I felt worthless. I felt like everybody was better than me. I felt like it was rock bottom. And I know that some of you are feeling that way too. And trust me, rock bottom is a very good place to begin your healing journey. We check in with our feared, centered identity unconsciously only to be met with walls and blocks. What this means is that we're always checking into our fear-centered identity. We're checking in and we're asking, consciously, unconsciously, 
Hey, is it okay to go to this meetup? Is it okay to converse with Jody? Is it okay to meet Tim? Is it okay to talk to this stranger who's talking to me? When we check in with that fear-centered identity, what tends to happen is it tells us not to do anything that is outside of our comfort zones. So we look to escape, escape, escape. And the more we look to escape, the more we look to prevent, 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 prevent this occurrence from happening again. Next thing you know, we go into our shells, our comfort zones, and we find that we're living a very small life, a life we're not meant to be living. We're meant to be living this life in all aspects, lovingly, courageously, and with a high degree of curiosity. I want you to understand that social skills are skills, skills like any other skills. You've got skills. You've got a ton of skills. And when you start to look at your social skills the same way, you can begin to become more patient with yourself and compassionate, knowing that this is a journey in itself. You're building social skills, right? It's not like... This is the end of it all. If you have a, a, a non-flowing conversation with someone, it doesn't mean that you are useless. It doesn't mean that you are unworthy. It doesn't mean that people are better than you. It just means that you have to build your social skills, and that's what you're doing. Dismissing the new because it's unfamiliar and uncomfortable goes against our true nature. Our true nature is to connect is to connect and stay connected. It's to grow our relationships. So when something feels unfamiliar or uncomfortable, what you have to understand is that that moment holds a tremendous amount of opportunity for you. Opportunity that if you take, will take you to a place where you haven't been in a long time. So now that we have an understanding of what we're dealing with, Let's understand what the keys are to healing this social anxiety. Number one, change depends on your ability to recognize the opportunity in front of you and respond. This is very, very key. Warrior, recently we've been talking a lot about the two parts of you, the inner child, the frightened you, and the adult mind, the logical and the rational you. Your initial fears come from the inner child. And if you escape and run from that situation, you're basically telling the inner child, yes, your beliefs are true. We don't want that to happen. We want to guide the inner child towards a new perspective and a new belief. And one of the ways to do it is to recognize the opportunity within discomfort and vulnerability. When you feel vulnerable in front of somebody or a group of people, you need to understand that you have the opportunity to rise above your inner child's belief systems. And when you consistently do so, you are shifting the inner child's belief systems to match that of your adult-minded belief systems. The second key is to listen actively and take your time when responding. Notice that sometimes in social situations, it can seem like time is going by so quickly and you have to react suddenly. This is not the case. You need to understand that with that opportunity comes the opportunity to slowly respond and listen actively. You want to be a part of the conversation. You don't want the conversation to end as quickly as possible as many anxiety sufferers want. No. Stay uncomfortable for a while because the more you stay uncomfortable, the more comfortable you're going to get. So listen actively and take your time when responding to somebody else. Key number three, pick one specific skill set that you want to strengthen during your interactions, such as 
becoming more physically engaging, for example, adding variety to your tone of voice, or asking more questions. Remember what we said. These are skills. They're social skills. So pick one specific skill that you want to strengthen with somebody in that moment and go ahead and strengthen it. Just focus on one. Because if you focus on too many things, then you're going to want to escape the situation. You're overwhelmed. There's too much going on. Key number four is starting today, I want you to keep a record of your progress. Keep a record of your progress. Today, I was at the library, and while I was at the library, this lady came up to me and asked me about the book that I was reading. And in that moment, I realized the opportunity that lay in front of me, and instead of quickly wanting the conversation to end, what I did was I responded, we chatted for a while, and it felt very comfortable as the conversation went on. My one skill I focused on was my posture, and I'm very, very proud of what I did today. Boom. Keep a record of your progress. This is key. It's key. Number five is gradually build up your social endurance. Because when our fight or flight response is overly activated for long periods of time, if we have been addicted to these stress chemicals, then what tends to happen is we tend to blow up something to make it much bigger than what it truly is. So if there's a discomfort, a fear, a threat in that moment, we'll see it 10 times worse than what it actually is. So what you want to do is gradually build up your social endurance. Maybe another minute or two conversing with the same person today. And tomorrow, maybe another minute or two extra. And you want to go ahead and invite yourself sometimes to a group of people online or offline. It doesn't matter. But gradually build up your social endurance to the point where you feel like you can spend hours with people you don't even know and maintain the conversation and most importantly, enjoy yourself. If you're enjoying yourself, you are growing mentally and emotionally, therefore physically and spiritually. That's what we want, warriors. So in closing, I want you to understand that if you're suffering from this social disconnect, I'm not even comfortable calling it social anxiety because many times, yes, it's socially uncomfortable, but it's not really social anxiety. It's not like we are so, so threatened by others. There may be a small percentage of people, but most of us still do what we have to do, right? We still are there in front of people each and every day. So it's a social discomfort more so that we're dealing with. And what we want to do is we want to gradually make it comfortable by going through these keys each and every day. And if you do, I promise you it's going to add a tremendous, a tremendous amount to your life because people out there need to get to know the true you not this artificial version of you that holds up a little mask and is very very nice to people all the time and prioritizes others before herself or himself of course you want to be nice you want to be gentle with people but you don't want to put yourself at the bottom of that pedestal you don't want to hold others at the top because remember this more than anything, and this is the most important thing that you can hear today when it comes to social discomfort and social anxiety. You are the prize. In the end, you are the prize. People getting to know you means that their lives will get so much better because of you are the prize, nobody else. And if you begin to see yourself that way, then you will begin to progress. You will begin to thrive. I believe in you. Warriors, you are more than anxiety. Don't forget it. If you're enjoying this podcast, please go ahead and give it a positive rate and review. 
If you know somebody out there that's suffering, please go ahead and share with them. And if you have any other questions on any of my programs, head over to TheAnxietyGuy.com today. I'll see you soon. Love you all. Bye-bye. Thanks for being an important part of the Anxiety Guy podcast community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive rate and review. If you're searching for further support on your road to recovery from anxiety, head over to anxietyexit.com and take part in the powerful End the Anxiety program based around the CBT model. If you're searching for a more one-on-one approach, you can sign up now for personal coaching sessions with Dennis via Skype. Remember, you are more than anxiety. See you in the next episode.